I don't know about that. I think happiness is an illusion. So I'm sitting here having my second cup of coffee. Mm. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's real good. And a guy walked past another hiker on the trail because I'm, I'm right next to the trail. I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's like right there. And the guy walks past and in passing, you know, he says, happy trails. What is this happy trails? Everybody on the trail says this. Like it's, it's, it's become uh, the saying of the trail. Everybody's happy trails, happy trails. And I think it's so pretentious and, and just wrong because I am not happy on the trail. You are not happy on the trail. The trail does not make us happy. The trail itself is not happy. There is nothing happy about climbing mountains and scrambling over rocks. Nothing happy about it. Nothing. The only time I'm happy is when I get to sit down in my sleeping bag after a long day of hiking and eat ramen noodles and think about all the miles I have to hike the next day. And even then I'm not truly happy because I have to hike the next day. It's never over. I, I wish they would get rid of this convention of happy trails. Um, if anything, call it, uh, what, what's a more truthful term? Let's stop lying to ourselves with this happy. It, it ain't no happy. It's not happy. Um, we can call it suffering trails. Like, hey, suffering trails, have a good day. You know, at least we're being honest with each other because it's happy trails. If I hear it one more time, I'm going to gag. It makes me sick. It, I, but people say it mindlessly. It's, it's, n nobody ever thinks about what, what the words that are coming out of their mouth. Happy trails. I'll, I'll show you a happy trail. <laughs> oh, that's not for YouTube anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't mean to go there. Yeah, I gotta get go hiking though. We gotta make it to Atkins. I don't say happy trails. I'm gonna put it out there. I've never said that. The only time I've said it is, is like right now, I'm talking to you. I say, I'll see you up the trail or have a good day. You know, something like that, like have a good day. I'm wishing you a good day. I'm not giving you the same ambiguous statement of happy trails, no. No, I don't like it. But I'll say I'll see you up the trail because it reminds me of the movie uh, No Country for Old Men. No Country for Old Men. And the sheriff, the aging sheriff, he talks about a dream he has. Uh, a dream he has and, and it includes his father. And he and his father are out camping on horseback, horseback camping. And they're out, you know, going through the mountains or the desert. And he says, and the sheriff says, in his dream they stop at a clearing and his dad says uh, you know i'm gonna head up the trail a little bit and i'll see you up the trail and so his dad goes up the trail and he's behind you know in the mountains and it's it's a it's kind of a metaphor or an analogy for his father passing away and then eventually he will follow him up the trail Okay, and I think that has much more meaning or import, and it is much more uh, artful and tasteful than saying, Happy Trail! So I say, I see you up the trail. You know, it, there's actually, it, that, that phrase is distinguished, you know, it has a meaning behind it. You know, seeing someone up the trail in the metaphorical sense. And in the literal sense, because you might see them up the trail if you've hiked fast enough. So... Next person that says happy trails to me, I'm going to call them on it. I'm be like, what do you mean by that? Are you just parroting, aping, copying some phrase that some dimwit, you know, gave to you 100 miles back? You know, think for yourself. Happy trails it makes me sick. Ugh. Ugh. And there's some of you out there that think I'm being too critical of this happy trail. It's like, you know, just let it be. It's an Appalachian Trail thing. No. No, I will not let it be. Here's a proposition for you. You come out here and hike the Appalachian Trail and see how happy you feel. All right? <laughs> I can guarantee you happy is not an adjective that you would use to describe yourself while you're hiking this trail. 
guarantee you. I'll, I'll put that, I'll back it up with Heisenberg's word, man. There's no uncertainty principle about it. Happy is not an adjective. You know, pleasantly exhausted at the end of the day, maybe, maybe. But happy, uh-uh. You, you, you do not feel happy out here. This is definitely not happy trails. If anything, it's the regretful trail because you're not happy. And every day you wake up looking back and searching your mind of all the actions that you did in the past that led you to this point in your life. <laughs> like what went so wrong in your life that you were out hiking the Appalachian Trail? <laughs> this is the trail of regret. It ain't happy trails. <sighs> I'm full of it today. That's what happens when I have two cups of coffee. I'm leveled up. I'm coming after uh, ultra lighters. I'm coming after you next. And uh, everybody that wears trail runners. Oh, about trail runners, they said. Uh huh. Y'all see that path? It looks like rocks. It looks like rocks to me. Hey, guess what? I don't feel those rocks. <laughs> but I bet if you're wearing trail runners, you felt every pebble going up this hill. <laughs> oh. oh. Okay, that's uh, trail runner people. Ultra lighters, I'm coming after you next. And then if I think of some more things about happy trails. Happy trails. Oh, yeah. If you're wearing trail runners, I know your feet aren't happy. Woo! I know those boys are barking. Every day when you wake up, they're just like, no, please don't do it to me again, man. Please, please don't put me in those shoes. Please go buy some boots. Yeah. I mean, your feet aren't gonna be happy in boots, but at least they won't be crying. I mean, I see people's feet and they look like, you know, they need to take Zoloft or something because those feet are depressed. Ultra lighters, I got one for you ultra lighters too. The other day, we came out to a road. Well, I came out to a road and I sat and did my thing for a little bit. And there was this lady there who was helping her, or waiting for her husband or something. And she came over and she gave me like a can of soda and a, a Fig Newton bar or whatever, something like that. No, I don't know, some kind of cereal bar like that. And I was like, whoa, yeah, I want one. Well, first she asked me, she was like, would you like this? And I was like, what kind of question is that? Of course. <laughs> I take everything, <laughs> everything, everything. If you, if you if you come at me with something in your hand, I don't even look at it, I just take it. I don't look a gift horse in the mouth. All right, but anyway, there was this girl that came maybe like five minutes after me and the lady went over and offered her, um, you know, the bar and a soda or whatever too. And the girl was like, oh no, I can't carry that. It's, uh, it's too much weight. Oh, like, what? What are you? I, 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 there's some words I can't use on YouTube, but they have to do with uh, not having a high IQ. You know, y'all remember watching Forrest Gump? He's like, huh, the state requirements for public schools are right here. Forrest is right here. She was right here. Woo! Sorry. <laughs> I gotta put it that way. Anyway, like that, that's that's not ultralight. That's stupid. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna turn down a soda and a candy bar because you can't carry the weight. What? What? You know, it turned out it was a happy story in the end. I mean, it had a happy ending because uh, I got the candy bar and the soda, so I got two. <laughs> I wish I wish there were more ultralighters out here, man. I'm just profiting off of y'all. Y'all are a sad bunch. I'm trying to think of what I'm gonna say. I, well, I know what I want to say, but I'm trying to think of the most political way of saying it. <laughs> Somebody told me that my YouTube channel is different. And I'm like, yeah. I don't smell like mediocrity. <laughs> you can watch some other YouTube channels and be depressed. Oh, yeah, I'm not doing that. New. No. Uh. Uh. Yeah. I mean, my gear, it smells like urine and disappointment. But my channel doesn't smell like mediocrity. 
I'm going all in. You have to. And the book I'm reading, Blue Highways, the author, he makes a very good statement. Uh, he says, there are two types of adventurers. The first adventurer goes out and hopes to find an adventure and a story to tell. And the second adventurer goes out and hopes he never meets an adventure or never finds a story to tell. And I thought about that and I like that and I think it's true. Some people call themselves adventurers, but they never really want to meet it. And some people call themselves adventurers and they don't even call themselves anything, but they're ready for it. <sighs> oh, I'm full of it this morning. <sighs> I'm telling you, coffee, caffeine, woo, I'm going. I'm going, y'all stick around, I'm gonna have some more. My mind's spinning, about a thousand RPM right now. <sighs> I gotta make fun of somebody. Oh, and y'all, when I make fun of people, it's not serious, it's not personal. I'm doing it for, for laughs and your own benefit. <laughs> and my own benefit too. I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing with you. And if you can't laugh at yourself, you know what? You need a sense of humor. And you know what? If I offend some of my viewers, if I offend some of y'all out there, good. You need to be offended. I think we're, we're lacking that in the world today. <laughs> Everything's too correct, too kind, too nice. No, get offended over something. <sighs> you might get offended and find you have the energy to do something amazing. So, hey, I'm doing a service. I don't mind being offended. I get offended when people say happy trails. All right? But it starts, it gets, I hear that. And it gets my wheels turning. And you know, I come up with something I hadn't come up with before. So I'm glad they offended me. One of you guys, one of, one of my viewers said, well, you noticed that I've calmed down in my videos. And I'm like, darn, have I? That's bad. I need to reinvigorate myself. And I don't want to calm down. When I calm down, I'll be in a nursing home. It's over with, you know? <laughs> calm down. Boy, I hope I don't calm down for another 30, 40 years. I'm trying to keep this, this ship floating, baby. Calm down. Man, I don't want any part of calming down. On one end, or on one end of the spectrum, <laughs> you know, I have a person that says, you know, now that you're calmer, people might watch more of your videos. Whatever. I'll calm down when I'm dead. But on the other end of the spectrum, I have a, my friend, that's, she says, you know, embrace the weirdo. I'm like, hold up now, hold up. This is YouTube. They have community guidelines. <laughs> I can't go full in, can't go all the way in. Uh-uh, boy, I have to keep some propriety about myself. Woo! YouTube would kick me off so fast. They wouldn't even let me watch YouTube videos if I went all in. Y'all don't want to see that. I'll go halfway in though, give you a taste. I'm starting to wind down. The coffee, I am not, I'm no longer feeling the effects of the caffeine. Oh, the spirit is leaving me. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, anyway, oh, I feel deflated now. Oh, what I was gonna say, I know I'm not the best YouTuber, I think I have some good ideas. My videos never turn out golden. I know they don't. But uh, I think I have some good ideas. But they're only... I, I usually only get as far as the, the structure, the outline, the bones of the beast. 
and I never fill it with the guts to make it truly golden and special. You know, I think my videos are like, you know, the fossils of a dinosaur in a museum. Ooh, it looks big and scary and it has the potential, you know, to be a deadly monster, but it's missing a heart and blood and muscles. You know, when you go and see that fossil of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, it's scary to look at, but you don't have the primal fear that this creature will kill you. And that's what videos need. They need that primal, they need to in instill that primal fear in people that, hey, yeah, this will kill you. Right now, y'all are just looking at the bones. I gotta give the bones some guts. Calm down, calm down, no, I refuse. That's what our institutions and conventions want us to do. They wanna curb your passions. Calm down. <laughs> they just want to make you a mediocre taxpayer. That's the world that we're in. School public education, oh, okay. Yeah, go read some books, man. Like, well, <laughs> Go look up a list of books that are banned in your county or state and go read those books. You'll get a better education in life than any public education, any public school system or private school system for that matter. Uh, what did Socrates say? An unexamined life isn't worth living. There you go. Examine your life. <sighs> Calm down. No, I refuse. I will not go quietly in the night. Isn't that a poem? Who wrote that poem? I don't know. Go find out, go read that poem. It might inspire you. I need to find that poem, it might inspire me. Calm down. Man, I'll calm down when I run out of coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's when I'll calm down. Man. Yeah, go look up some banned books. All of them. I don't care what it's about. It could be, you could be reading about the Antichrist or something. Read it, you'll learn something. You don't have to believe in it. You don't have to accept what the books say is dogma, but read in it and open your mind to some ideas outside of your normal life. You know, boy, it's amazing. It's amazing how deep the world is out there. I don't claim to be deep though. I'm not deep. <sighs> I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't stray beyond my shallow lagoon. I sit on my rock and I look out into the depths of the ocean and I just imagine what kind of forms are taking shape beyond the sunlight, beyond my vision. You know, I don't go out there though because I drown, it's too deep out there. Uh, too deep. But sometimes I do, I do have moments of inspiration and I think it's natural I think it's coming from me and I look in the mirror and I'm like oh man you are so amazing not really not really I'm full of myself you know if you want the truth I'm just a fisherman and I'm walking down the sandy beach and every once in a while I find a pretty seashell that the waves have washed up on the sand and I look at the seashell and I admire it and I steal its beauty and I claim it as my own <laughs> it's not my idea. Someone else came up with that before me. Everything, the Western world is all a footnote to Plato. <sighs> Everything I say is a footnote to Plato. Calm down. And then calm down and then someone wants to say happy trails and smile as they're saying it. You have to be kidding me. What happiness are you talking about, brother? Or sister, or whoever you are, whoever's saying that happy trails. The happiness you're referring to when you say that is some imbecilic, naive happiness that is only found in, I don't know, people that have, got, have received lobotomies. Happy trails. Man. Yeah, I'll, I'll say happy trails after I get my lobotomy. Happy trails. I don't want to hear that ever again. Happy trails. People say happy trails like it's some kind of verbal opium for their senses as if it's gonna numb the pain in their feet and their back as they're hiking this trail and the fatigue, happy trails. <sighs> I don't want the opium. 
I want to feel what's out there. You know, if you say there's a bear and it's the big bad bear, show me. I want to see the bear. Oh, make sure there's not people behind me. I might scare somebody out here. They catch me in one of these moods. Especially if they say happy trails. Boy, we are liable to have, you know, uh, intervention out here on the trail. Trail intervention. Yes. <laughs> and pff, happy trails. I don't want the opium. Do not give me, do not wish the happy trail upon me. Yeah, I will, you know, ward it away with garlic. I'm going to put garlic outside of my tent to keep the happy trail away. If y'all get that reference, Bram Stoker, baby. Happy trail. I want to see the vampire. You know, everybody says there's a vampire out here. I want to see it. You know, boogeyman, let the boogeyman come out. I want to see the adventure. I don't want the happy trail. I want the adventure. See it, baby. Happy trails. I balk when I think of that now. Happy trails. When has anything been done, anything meaningful been done in history? Because someone was happy. <laughs> was Socrates happy? Was he, was he satisfied with life? No. He was out there trying to find the person that was satisfied with life. Was he happy? No. Alexander the Great, was he happy? No. Caesar, when he crossed the Rubicon, when was he happy? Of course not. Caesar. Abraham Lincoln, was he happy? No. Have you seen his monument in DC? That is the most unhappy, serious face on this planet. Happy trails. You can't tell me that anything's been done Anything in this world's been done because someone was happy. No, happiness, complacency, they're almost synonymous. History, the history books, you know, they aren't tales of happiness. History is a tale of pain and suffering. Just like the Appalachian Trail, pain and suffering. That's what history is about. Wars and battles and plagues and destruction. And how people survive through all that. Not because they were happy, but because they had to. <sighs> Necessity is the mother of invention, not happiness. So when you say happy trails, think about what you're saying. You're saying you are complacent. You are satisfied. And you have no plans for your future. When you say happy trails. <sighs> That's not me. I don't want to be happy. <laughs> be happy when I'm dead. I'll be calm when I'm dead. Give me a lobotomy and I won't care anymore. The real movers and shakers in this world, they were not happy. They are not happy. They're not satisfied. Happiness to them is anathema. It's their antithesis, happiness. No, no, I will not go quietly into the night, happy and satisfied. Oh no, calmness, be calm, be happy. Oh, oh, enjoy your beer and circus, your bread and circus, the opium, no.